in your mind, what's the next evolution of the internet and the internet age we live in? Um, artificial intelligence is gonna change everything. Um, it's, it'll have a bigger impact on us than the internet, than phones, mobile computing or mobile networking, wide area networking. You know, it's just going to dwarf everything and it's harder to learn, so it's harder to implement, which means it's going to change a lot of things and not everybody's going to be able to adapt. And so it's going to be really scary, but also interesting. Um, and create a lot of opportunities as we go forward. We're still in the first inning of the preseason games when it comes to AI, but it's gonna have a dramatic impact. And so that's one of the things I spend a lot of time on, reading about artificial intelligence, reading about applications, reading about how to build you know, machine learning models or neural networks, and because that, that's, how I, that's how I compete, by trying to know more and apply it to, to things I know. Mark Cuban, invest in AI or get left behind. But first, a quick shark story. In the deep, murky waters just outside the city of Los Angeles, two visionaries, Maurice Batchelor and Joel Griffith, embarked on a quest to change the world's view on artificial intelligence bots. With their creation, Bot It, they ventured into the den of dragons, seeking allies in their noble cause. The pitch. Maurice. Esteemed sharks of innovation, we present Bot It, a beacon of hope in a digital world dominated by faceless bot armies. Our mission? to empower the everyday hero with the magic of AI, turning the tide in battles for concert tickets and sneaker releases. Joel, with Botit, we're not just automating tasks. We're crafting shields for the common folk, enabling them to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with the giants of the digital realm. The challenge. Shark Rubin says, Your tale intrigues me, yet bots have long cast shadows over the lands I oversee. How does your creation differ from the dark magic we know? Shark Cuban says, Indeed, your journey is noble, but the path is fraught with peril. Convincing us requires more than words. It demands proof of your bot's virtue, the deliberation. Maurice assured, fear not, for bot it is crafted with the heart of a champion. It seeks not to conquer, but to equalize, ensuring fair play in the digital coliseum. Joel's analogy, and to the skeptics, we say this, bot it is the sword in the stone, available to all who seek justice in the digital age. It's not the tool that defines morality, but the heart of its wielder, the offer. Shark Cuban says, your courage and innovation have moved me. I offer my allegiance and treasure, $150,000 for a share of your quest, 20% to be precise. With Bodit's magic and my guidance, we shall redefine the future. Shark Rubin added, a tempting proposition, yet the unity of forces can forge mightier weapons. What say you to my offer? $50,000 for a smaller share? 15%, valuing your endeavor even greater. The Clash. The great Shark O'Leary yells, Behold, a clash of titans, a battle of billionaires. The fate of Bodit hangs in the balance, a treasure sought by many but destined for the few. The Resolution. Maurice interjected, Why choose when unity offers strength? Join forces, noble sharks, and together, let's lead Bodit to realms unimagined. Then Joel says, with your combined might and wisdom, we can illuminate the darkest corners of the digital world. Shark Cuban and Shark Rubin. Agreed. Together, we offer $300,000 for 30% of your quest. Let this alliance be the dawn of a new era. The conclusion. Maurice declares, by the stars we accept. Today, Botted emerges from the shadows, championed by the greatest of allies. This alliance will herald a new chapter in the annals of digital history. Joel added, to all who dream of a fairer world, join us. For with Botted, the future is not just written, it's crafted by the hands of those who dare to believe. And so, with the backing of their newfound allies, Maurice and Joel set forth to conquer the digital world. Botted became more than a tool. It became a symbol of hope, a testament to the power of unity and innovation. In the deep sea of technology, where giants roam and battles are fought in the blink of an eye, remember the tale of Botted the creation that dared to dream. For in this story lies the truth, that the future belongs to those who believe in the beauty of their dreams. The end. Wowzers, what an intriguing story, hey? Welcome to Meg Digital AI. For more content on creating financial freedom through AI and automation, 
please like, share, and subscribe. The Shark Tank meets AI. Morris Batchelor wants to change people's opinions about artificial intelligence bots. Billionaires Mark Cuban and Michael Rubin are up for the challenge. On Friday's episode of ABC's Shark Tank, Batchelor pitched his Los Angeles-based company Bot It alongside Joel Griffith, his founding partner and head of growth. Sharks, my name is Maurice Batchelor, and I'm from Cleveland, Ohio. And my name is Joel Griffith, and I'm from Trenton, New Jersey. And together, we founded Bot It, a website and mobile app that uses artificial intelligence to complete online tasks. We're seeking a $150,000 investment for a 10% stake in our company. So, Sharks, have you ever gone online to reserve a dinner reservation, book a golf tea time, or buy concert tickets and notice that they're gone in seconds? Well, that's because an online robot, also known as a bot, probably just outbooked you. Bots now control 50% of online traffic for things like booking reservations and making online purchases. But how can humans compete? It's almost impossible to click as fast as a bot. And it's annoying to have to sit at a computer, keep clicking refresh, <laughs> hoping that you're the lucky one to buy those concert tickets before they disappear. Or having to set your alarm for the crack of dawn, hoping to book a reservation for a popular <laughs> restaurant, only to find that a bot has already beat you to it. Let's say, for example, you're looking to book a reservation at one of our favorite restaurants. It's their wonderful fish and chips. One of the best <laughs> restaurants in the world. You can select from one of our pre-built bots to start automating in seconds, or you can customize and we'll build one for you. It's that simple. So, Sharks, next time you're looking to book a golf tea time, bought it. Need tickets to a popular concert? Bought it. Want to impress your friends by having a reservation at the hottest restaurant in town? Bought it. So, Sharks, now that you got it, let's spot it. Botted is a website and mobile app that uses AI to help people automate online tasks like booking appointments or making restaurant reservations, they said. A pro subscription can also be used to help people jump the line for sneaker release draws or snag concert tickets in seconds, said Batchelor, the company's lead software engineer. That makes it a somewhat controversial business. Bots have tarnished the shopping experiences of consumers across the world, including in those specific industries, <laughs> sneakers and live events. This is a real issue, said Ruben, the CEO of sports retailer Fanatics and a guest judge on the episode. We have probably billions of dollars of products that bots try to buy from us each year. Bots come to get everything. There's nothing that AI won't impact. As big as the, so been, having been around a while, I saw the impact of PCs, then I saw the impact of local area networks. Then I saw the impact of wide area networks. Then I saw the impact of the internet. Then I saw the impact of mobile. Then I saw the impact of wireless. You know, now I'm seeing the impact of, of artificial intelligence and it dwarfs any of those things. And if I don't understand how to apply it to my businesses, I mean, I remember selling PCs and software and walking in saying, you don't need to use that pen and paper on, on a, you know, on a notepad or a ledger pad. Now we're gonna give you a spreadsheet. And by the way, here's a, here's a spreadsheet that costs $495 and I had to pay to go get trained on how to sell it, which is crazy now when you think about it. But then we said, okay, now you can play what if. Then we said, you can connect these PCs. Unless I understood the technology, how was I going to explain it? How was I going to understand it? Unless I understand it now, how am I going to invest in it? Right. You know, then I got to go trust somebody who says, oh yeah, I know AI and maybe they do, maybe they don't. And it's really easy just to have, just to, okay, say so you figure it out. That's just not my style. So you're building a base of knowledge, and then you think that at some point it's going to pay dividends in terms of... It already of, has. Right? I mean, if, they, if you truly believe AI is going to change everything, how are you going to understand what people are doing to change everything unless you at least have a, a foundational understanding of it? Now, I'm not going to build a million-layer neural network and try to change the world. I'm not going to show you... I'm not going to write a research paper and saying, here's how why the lottery ticket approach works and you can build smaller neural networks with less data um, and be more you know, um, resource efficient. But I can read that stuff and understand that when somebody says, okay, we're building this project and we need this size data set or this size data set, or we need this amount of resources, I can ask questions and understand the answers. Billionaire Mark Cuban warns, invest in AI or get left behind. The Dallas Mavericks owner is betting on what he believes will be the next industry to watch artificial intelligence and the security designed around it. AI is going to be as important to companies as cash flow is, Cuban said.
You have to be good at it or you won't be able to compete. And his track record for sniffing out the next big thing isn't exactly off base. After all, he did create the first high-definition satellite television network, Access TV, and help launch one of the first internet radio stations, Broadcast.com. Whenever anyone calls me an idiot, that's usually a first good step, he said during a moderated luncheon at ASIS International's 63rd Annual Seminar and Exhibits, an event for security professionals. About 4,000 people listened to Cuban as he kicked off his shoes, literally, and explained how AI will change the game for companies, educators, and future developments. And eventually, software will be smart enough to write new software, which will create a pivotal moment in the workforce, he said. Therefore, the security around networks with that kind of intelligence will be more valuable than ever. We're not there yet, he said. But when we get to that point, it may be 10 years, it may be 15, it may be 20. How you design those networks that create the software will be very important. But Cuban, an active investor, isn't just talking. He's putting his money where his mouth is. He says his largest stock holding is in Amazon, which has heavily invested in AI and offers AI services via its cloud storage. The company calls its new service Macy. He's also keeping his eyes peeled for smaller companies in machine learning and AI, and already has at least three companies in his investment portfolio. London-based FaceMeta uses machine learning to help tackle the growing problem of fake news. San Francisco-based Osaro uses AI to help robots learn complex environments faster. And Montreal-based Fuzzy.ai takes existing business knowledge and creates an algorithm that constantly improves and helps leaders make better decisions. But the smaller companies are going to have a harder time, as the Apples, Googles, Facebooks, and Microsofts of the world are investing and growing their capabilities quickly. The rich get richer, Cuban said. So it's going to be a challenge for a lot of my smaller companies to be able to leverage those things. That's why I invested in a lot of different AI companies, so that we can catch up. And eventually, when AI is smart enough to develop its own software, the workforce demands will shift. Currently, markets battle over top software developers. But that may not always be the case, Cuban suggested. Once the software can write the software itself, the expertise that's required to give the software knowledge becomes more important. He said, adding that people with expertise in different subjects will be needed for the content since the software will be written by robots. Software writing, skill sets won't be nearly as valuable as being able to take a liberal arts education and applying those skills in assisting and developing networks. But in order for the country to advance to that future, AI and robotics need to become core competencies in the U.S. and not just in the business world, Cuban said. Companies are opening major offices in China and Montreal, where AI and robotics are considered core competencies, he added. Meanwhile, cybersecurity concerns will continue to rise, as connected devices, AI, and other robots will become important to everyday society. So systems built to protect the data and function of those devices will have to be built with cybersecurity at the forefront. Anything that can be programmed can be hacked, Cuban said. For Cuban, the future is clear. AI and machine learning need to be a priority for business leaders, educators, and policymakers. Let's go out and invest in the infrastructure, he said. We have to make robotics and AI a core competency of the United States of America. If we don't, we're going to be on the outside looking in. Well, that's all, folks. Are you a treasure hunter at heart? Well, grab your shovel and dig into the description section below to disoffer our valuable resources. Please feel free to try our new custom chatbot powered by OpenAI. The Stock Sensei analyzes market sentiment for informed stock and bond investments. The link to access the chatbot is provided in the description. Thank you for watching Meg Digital AI. For wonderful gifts and amazing gadgets, please visit megdigital.com.